What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a fantastic day. I feel like it's been at least a month or so since we did a full garden tour showing you what's going on in all 10 of our plots. A lot of things have been growing pretty fast since then, so I want to give you guys an update on all the things we have growing here at Lazy Dog Farm. Tell you a little bit about what's to come on some of these plots and just kind of do a reset as we're at the end of 2021 about to jump into 2022. So let's start out over here where we've got a lot going on in these two plots right here. Nothing to eat, but there is a lot going on. So right here, this little sliver of this big plot, we have some caliente mustard as a cover crop and there's some daikon radishes or tillage radishes mixed in there. And up kind of on top of the hill here it's all looking really really good a lot of lush foliage there and i like what i'm seeing I have no idea what happened down here and why this stuff just didn't really ever get up and going not sure what's going on in that little piece right there but the rest of it is looking really really good i still got these okri stalks in here i need to get in here and remove these but something interesting here so those there all the way to the end that you see that are dead is the uh, or was the cajun jewel variety and these here which somehow are still alive barely seem to be impervious to frost this is the choppy okra here and they're not really growing not really doing anything there are some pods on them there a few of them they're tough inedible but the frost hasn't killed these yet and we've had three or four decent frosts so far so i'm not really sure what's going on here i may save some of these seeds here and uh just to see if we have a more cold tolerant variety of okra here that we're dealing with pretty interesting stuff nothing really to eat there like i said the pods are all pretty tough but we're still getting some flowers there at the top and they're not completely dead like the other variety on the end there and then beside that, in the same plot here, we have our Balanza clover, which the chickens have been grazing heavily. We've been moving the chicken tractor every day, and they finally covered the entire plot. Well, with the exception of this tiny little sliver right here. I'm not going to pull the chicken tractor over that because it's um, not as wide as the chicken tractor, and they'll end up kind of tearing up more of that ground there on the outsides of that little piece so we'll we'll catch that piece on the second time around but you can see they're working it down pretty good and this is where they started over here and this piece going down that way so this is almost completely recovered and can be grazed again but the problem here is going to be that moving them every single day not giving them any chicken feed we can cover this whole plot pretty quick and i don't know if i start right here again start going all the way around if this stuff in the middle here will be recovered in time so i think i'm gonna have to give this plot just about maybe a week break from the chickens let it recover a little bit before we cycle that chicken tractor around it one more time now right beside that we have this plot here that is going to get the chicken tractor as soon as it's ready this is the bayou kale cover crop and it's filling in pretty good but it doesn't look big enough to be grazed yet i think if we put the chicken tractor on here right now this stuff wouldn't grow back very well so probably still another few weeks before that's ready to graze and so we're going to have to just pull the chicken tractor off this plot for a week or so let some of this clover recover we'll run it around that plot one more time and by the time we do that this kale here should be ready to graze and over here on the other side of the barn in this little plot we've got these english peas here which are pretty much toast I've had two good harvest off those but uh looks like they're winding down there's a few left on there there's some daggum leaf-footed bugs out here in december look at those guys right there y'all ain't supposed to come out and be messing stuff up until in the spring or later in the spring i don't know what they're doing out here but uh 
we'll probably pull up these peas pretty soon just a few pods left on there enough for a snack still battling a few weeds in here because this plot here stays kind of wet this time of year but we're making a little headway we've got these giant marigolds on the end we just pruned those back pretty hard because it doesn't look like we're going to get more frost anytime soon and the few light frosts we've had they've been kind of surviving it so i pruned them back pretty hard so they'll kind of stand back up some of them were leaning over hopefully they'll still uh, continue to make some blooms for us we got our mustard here might not hurt to spray that one more time it's starting to get eat up a little bit but it's ready for its fourth or fifth harvest We've got this bachelor button here it's finally starting to bloom got one little pretty purple bloom on it and then down there that orange you see we've got calendula blooming down there in this plot here this kind of long and skinny plot we've got a mixture of all kind of different cool season cover crops and the plot is nice and full looks good but i'm having an issue with one particular variety of mustard i haven't figured out which it is because we planted a mustard mix in here but with this warmer weather we've been having i've got mustard bolting in here which is not a good thing because i was hoping this plot was just going to be able to ride until maybe february or so and i wouldn't have to do anything with it but since that mustard is bolting we're going to have to incorporate all this pretty quick we're getting some nice succession of growth here some of those faster growing brassicas kind of start out first and grow faster than everything else and then that clover kind of comes in behind it there so we're getting the succession of growth that we want to see but i definitely don't want to see that mustard bolting this soon so we're going to have to do something here pretty quick over here in the dream garden we'll start off in this plot where we're having the same issue with the mustard bolting so here we didn't plant a bunch of different cover crops we just planted that trifecta mustard blend we did throw some tillage radish in there so it's one of the species in that trifecta mustard blend that is bolting early that i'm seeing here it's that one there that's making those white flowers and so just like that other plot i showed you we're going to have to incorporate this early i was hoping this would ride it out until february but these high 70 degree days have forced it to go to seed we don't want a weed problem in here so we got to do something with this quick and i've got to look at some of my notes but i think i'll be able to figure out which particular variety of mustard is causing us problems there was one see that plot with the tarp is over there there was one mustard variety in that mix that bolted early that caused us to have to kind of terminate all that before we wanted to and then i think it's the same variety that's doing it in these other plots so i'll look at my notes through the process of elimination i think i can figure it out i don't think it's the kodiak brown mustard because we grew that one last year and it held and did just fine so i think it's maybe the pacific white gold or there was one more in that mix i'll have to look up the caliente mustard that i showed you at the beginning of the video is doing really really good and by the looks of it that might be my go-to mustard fumigation crop in the future because it's not showing any signs of bolting so now we'll move on to this plot right here where we got all kinds of good things going on we've got some beautiful cilantro here that we've been enjoying several times a week love having fresh cilantro in the garden we've got some dill here we'll be using pretty soon doing some fermenting with our carrots and stuff like that and then down here never grown fennel before but I think this looks pretty good not really sure what to be looking for here but uh all those plants look pretty healthy to me and we're getting some decent sized bulbs down there might be time to try some of this and my goal with the fennel was to try you know eat a little bit of it but mostly grow it to bring in the swallowtail butterflies which i hear it's good for but i don't know a whole lot about that process so somebody out there please give me a little help here if i want to attract the butterflies i just leave it in the soil there just leave it there for months let it do its thing or is there something specific i need to do 
somebody give me a little help there and moving along from that first row there we've got our green cabbage here i believe this variety is called capture starting to get some nice head formation there by the looks of these leaves here we ought to make some pretty decent sized cabbage heads so just kind of playing the waiting game there a red cabbage got bit back pretty good by those first couple frosts we had so don't really know what to expect there we'll probably have some smaller heads on that but we'll take what we can get we've got our napa cabbage or chinese cabbage over here that's pretty much ready to harvest got some pretty nice ones along here some of them got a little bit back at the tips of the heads by that last frost we had but these are all pretty much ready to harvest we'll be making a bunch of kimchi with these guys soon and uh, we'll be sure to show you that when we do and then beside that cabbage we've got our rutabagas here which are ready to harvest we'll be doing that on a video soon lots of good grains here to eat I don't know if you can see in there, but we got some pretty good sized rutabaga roots that we can eat too. Lots of good groceries coming off this row. With them rutabagas, you really don't waste a whole lot. Maybe the stems a little bit. We like to eat the leaves and the rutabagas. Then we've got our cauliflower and broccoli that we protected during that last frost. A couple of my rubber bands sprung off here. I'm gonna have to replace those, but most of the cauliflower is still wrapped there and that frost fabric did a great job of keeping our broccoli nice and protected those heads are getting close to what we would consider acceptable harvest size still probably another week or so to go but looking pretty good so far then we've got our brussels sprouts here two rows of them that we pruned several videos ago probably going to give them another shot of nitrogen pretty soon so they'll keep growing hopefully getting a little taller so we get more sprouts per stalk beside that we've got our spinach there which looks great ready to harvest again and then we've got some savoy cabbage right here which is just now starting to head a little bit there beautiful looking green leaves here i can't remember i think this variety is called savoy perfection it looks really really good so far so i'm excited to see the eventual head size we get off these guys on this plot here we've got the tarp on it just kind of holding tight we'll soon probably within the next week or two be pulling back the tarp we'll put a little overhead water on it put a little fish emulsion in there to feed the soil and put that tarp back on there and let it continue to do its thing over here we've got our leeks and onions onions are finally starting to grow some leeks are looking really really good there still haven't planted anything right here might throw in another row of leeks there and then the onions that took the transplants that actually grew well are doing pretty good and they're growing pretty fast so seeing a good response to the fertilizer in here it's just taking them a long time to get going but now I'm starting to see some pretty fast growth. And our bunch of onions here are growing pretty fast too. Still a ways from harvesting, but I'm liking what I'm seeing as far as the fullness of those rows there. I don't think you can plant these things too thick. I planted them really thick. Probably could have got away with planting them even thicker than that. And then in this next plot here, we got lots of good groceries and a little bit of pigweed I need to take care of. So we've got this darker boar kale here this is really really good stuff we've been eating a lot of this you can see those plants there those shorter ones those are the ones that titus has been coming out here and picking he's a little rough on them but they're still kicking and then this variety of lacinato kale this black magic i really really like it a lot isn't it just pretty we've harvested this a couple of times it's ready to be harvested again i just like the color on it it's a little darker than most lacinato kale varieties and it's just beautiful then we've got our portuguese kale which i talked to you about in that last video where we talked about some more winters for 2021 we've harvested that part of the row recently need to get this part of the row here these are really really good greens really really productive plants we got our collards right here which are kind of recovering from their last picking they'll be ready to pick again in a few weeks beside that we've got our second round or second succession of broccoli and cauliflower hasn't been too long ago since we put those transplants in the ground 
they're starting to grow pretty good now and then over here is where we have all our garlic so we got four rows of soft neck garlic here you see those little kind of wood shavings in there when i cleaned out the chicken tractor their little nesting box up top i took that and just sprinkled it along here figured this garlic would like some of that extra nitrogen we didn't get every single bowl we planted to come up but we got most of them there's a few little gaps here like right there a few bulbs didn't come up but we got pretty full rows for the most part so i'm pretty happy with that and uh probably heal those up pretty soon we'll get some straw around them in the next few weeks and just let them ride kind of like we've done with our elephant garlic over here we strawed this a few videos ago and it's looking nice just making sure to um keep enough water on it with the drip tape but it's growing well and the wind is picking up a little bit out here but in the last plot of the tour I got this little space right here. I think I'm gonna put some, uh, I got some rutabaga transplants in the greenhouse ready to go. I think I'm gonna put some of those in there. This lettuce is kind of winding down. Still got some heads out there to harvest and give away. Some of it kind of grew back a little bit, but uh, still good edible lettuce out there. We got our beets here. It's the foliage on them looks really, really good. I've checked the roots and they're not quite big enough to harvest yet but they're getting close because they're planted so thick and we didn't thin them it'll take a little while for the roots to get big and kind of push each other out of the way but really happy with how healthy everything is looking here in these two beet rows and we got our parsnips here which are looking really really good foliage at least is looking really really good I haven't pulled one yet but I'm happy what I'm seeing there and then carrots got nice full double rows here this is what we want to see we want to see that gap there between the double row covered up don't have to worry about any weeds there probably need to roll through here with a wheel hoe pretty soon let's get a few of these stray weeds between the rows but as far as the foliage goes we're looking really really good still a decent ways away from having any carrots to speak of but the plants are looking good so far so I hope you enjoyed the garden tour. As you can see, even though it's December, about to be January, there's still lots of stuff going on here. So we'll have a lot of harvesting upcoming. A lot of this stuff is getting ready to harvest. We'll be doing some turnover with these cover crops because we've got that mustard bolting. We've got to do something about that. We'll be pulling back our tarp, checking on the progress of that. Lots of good things coming. And then I also thought about I've been getting a lot of seed catalogs in the mail recently and seems like somebody a while ago asked for me to do this on a video. You can tell me if it's something you'd like to see or not. But I thought about doing a video just talking about these different seed catalogs, kind of what I look for when I'm picking or deciding on new varieties to try for the next year. Maybe even showing you some of these new varieties that I think I might try. Let me know if that's something you want to see and we'll try to do that on an upcoming video as well. And then don't forget to tell me about the fennel and the butterflies, what I need to do there. I'm guessing I just leave it in the ground, but somebody help me out there. And if you haven't already, head on over to our website, lazydogfarm.com. You'll find lots of good recommended products, recipes, and even some cool Lazy Dog Farm merch. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Well, mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life.